think a huge, huge accident in turn two. And yeah, you can see the car, the bits of debris all over the track there. And uh, there you can see some movement from Scott Brody. He's got the steering wheel off the car already. And it looks as though he's going to be able to get out of the car after an absolutely huge impact against the wall there. Now, obviously, we haven't actually seen what happened. But once again, Jeremy, it just proves the strength of these cars, doesn't it? Look at the amount of damage it's done to it. Fantastic. That was that was a big accident. He, I, not, I didn't see what happened. All I saw was a flash of flame across the track. They've the Motorola 300 sign. I looked up and I could see it was Scott through its car there. But uh, the the, uh, the uh, safety team was right with him right away. And he's already up. Wow. He hit that hard backwards, didn't he? He'd already lost it sort of halfway round the turn, which is a fairly unusual way to go off on these sort of tracks. Normally they run wide, but he went in hard, very, very hard backwards and he put a big mark on the wall right next to the mark that uh, Aunt Meyer put on, on that wall this morning in the warm-up. Almost exactly the same place, a slightly different accident, but dramatic stuff for Scott Pruitt. And that, of course, the man running second in the championship who was running here in sixth place, doing a great job, looking to score more points, and that has very much ended his afternoon's work. The main thing is, though, that he's out of the car, he looks OK, obviously shaken, but no serious injuries. He got out right away, didn't he, and seemed, uh, seemed to get out uh, pretty handily this a couple of the uh, safety team they're just uh, looking at him just checking him over he'd be a bit dazed i'm sure but you know as you say remarkable amount of uh, development gone into the safety of these cars particularly over the last few years that's a reynard chassis of course built in Bista in england and uh, there's a lot of safety material around the driver's helmet to protect the helmet in, in, in the, this sort of an impact so another yellow flag n number seven at this time as uh, the race continues, Michael Andretti is still our race leader from Vassar and Zanardi. Andretti's managed to stay ahead of those guys. There you can see him behind the pace car. Yeah, in actual fact, he was running extremely well before before this caution. He was running 25.9 pretty consistent. That's probably faster he's been most of the day. And uh, he was hanging on to the lead pretty well, though. It's still great for rain, of course. But yeah. uh, able to run a good pace there, Michael Andretti, out in the front of the field. I think the press a little bit surprised by that, uh, given that he was appeared to be struggling earlier on in the race. There you, there you can see Scott Brewer just walking away, helmet off and uh, looking a little bit dazed but looking okay and that's the important thing as the car safety team now can go to work and clear up the mess on the track. You can see down there in the bottom corner of your screen the whole corner of the car well, no, not just the front corner or the rear corner, I can't quite make it out, but the, the whole suspension unit still attached to the hub and the wheel there, just ripped off, just wrenched away in the force of that impact. Yeah, big crash, a heck of a lot of debris. This is going to be a long yellow to clear this one up. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, car safety team will go out and pick up the, the, the bigger parts of debris and then they'll get the, the, the uh, brushes out there and brush it away and, and then there's probably the jet dryer after that. So we'll be uh, quite a long time under yellow, I think. And, just check back and see when Michael Andretti last made a pit stop. We're just taking a look at the onboard shot here, Jeremy, from onboard Scott Pruitt's car. This is coming down the front straight. He's coming into turn one. It's halfway through the next corner that it goes wrong. He's quite close to another car, gets in the slipstream a little bit, and then it just swaps ends and bang into the wall. And black goes the picture as the end of Scott Pruitt. In fact, the picture coming back, the camera surviving that, which is pretty remarkable. But uh, that just shows you when it goes wrong on an oval, it goes wrong very, very quickly indeed. And there, the impact into the wall and the flame out that you pulled a glimpse of out of the window. I couldn't, uh, I wasn't spotting that, just looking at the computer at the time. But uh, a very, very big accident indeed. But Scott Pruitt lives to fight another day and uh, carry on the battle in the championship. But today, he's not going to score any more points. No, shame for Scott Pruitt. He's really had a good season up until now. That'll give his uh, confidence a bit of a... Bit of a a bash. Of course, Scott Pruitt had a horrible accident in uh, in '89 testing with, when he was with the Budweiser True Sports team down in uh, Florida. Brake failure there caused that. was on a road course, and uh, a lot of injuries there for Scott Pruitt. He's done well to come back from that. And uh, the good news is he seems to be fine here this afternoon. Yes, that is excellent news. And I'm just wondering. I mean, we know this is a hard track physically. I suppose we're getting into that point of the race where that's beginning to tell a little bit. Not that I'm saying that was any cause of the problem for Scott Pruitt. But as we go through this race, we could well see the drivers get making little mistakes, just running wide in a few places. It is tough on them, so that's going to be part and parcel of the remaining part of this race. Just under 100 laps still to go as Andretti leads. Welcome back, and the car of Scott Pruitt is being towed away after that dramatic accident. But Scott, OK, he's off to the medical centre to be checked up, but uh, all look to be 
in reasonably good shape as he um, stepped into the ambulance, so that's good news. Just to let you know, we've just seen Raul Bozell come out of the pits. He's uh, without a nose cone, so he's obviously trying to stay on the lead lap, so he's come back out. He's followed around the pace car for a moment, and then we'll see him come back in again. But there was obviously something that's happened to Bozell as well. So both of the Brahma sports cars in trouble at much the same time, although obviously not quite so bad for Bozell as it was for Pruitt. You're watching Michael Andretti at the moment, and as you mentioned, Jeremy, before that yellow, he was actually running quite competitively, surprisingly competitively, judging by what he'd been doing earlier in the race. And in terms of pit stop strategies, he's not too far off the pace at the moment. No, he's not. The previous, a couple of cautions ago, I think it was when Bobby Rahal had his problem, uh, Michael came into the pits, that was on lap 109. We've just completed 150 laps, so he's done 41 laps since he's made a pit stop, but the vast majority of that, due to the rain, due to Rahal's accident, and now the accident, with, oh, sorry, Rahal's fire, and now the accident involving Scott Pruitt, most of those has been under caution, so you really won't have used up too much fuel. You'll be able to go quite a bit more before he needs to come in for a pit stop. There's further surgery there for the Brahma Sports car of uh, Raoul Boisel. Doesn't it look odd without the nose cone? But there it is, it's, uh, the nose cone is now being bolted on the front. And again, he came out just to stay on the lead lap, follow the pace car around, then he can get back in again, have the nose cone fitted, and hopefully get back out without losing a lap. That's the, uh, that's the idea between behind coming into the pits a couple of times, and that's the chance that this form of racing gives you. And if you can just stay on the lead lap, in fact, he's quite a way off it because of his problems earlier. But he's just trying not to drop even further down the order. He's already some five laps down behind the leaders, so in a way it's surprising that they're that worried about it. But you never know, at the end of the race, he may still be able to pick up some points. Yeah, and yeah, I think perhaps he, we, we didn't we really know what happened to him earlier on when, uh, when he went out. He had his problem at the same time as, uh, as Brian Herter. I don't know whether he had a spin trying to avoid Herter or something, it's hard to say, but perhaps he damaged the nose then, and he's been soldiering on since, and now's an opportunity to come, out, come in and make a change. Conjecture, of course, otherwise maybe could be that he ran over some debris there from his teammate's action, teammate's action. so good chance to make the change for Raul Boisel. Well, no great changes in the order at the moment. We're still under yellow here. Welcome back to Gateway as we continue this race. 155 laps are completed out of the 236, 81 still to go. Michael Andretti leads the field round behind the yellow flag. Still the clear-up operation after Scott Pruitt's dramatic accident, but they have virtually finished that now. They've set the jet cleaner out there and basically getting everything sorted out. So it won't be long, but I have to tell you that we've got some more rain spots on the window of our commentary box here, down at the opposite the end of the pit lane, on the outside of the track is where we're situated, and we've definitely got just a few more droplets spreading their way across our, uh, our windscreen, looking out onto the circuit, which is a bit of a worry. We uh, had a little bit of rain earlier, as we told you. That seemed to stop, but now I can see a few more drops falling, and this is going to be quite a worry for the card officials and for the drivers out there. Andretti leading them round at the moment. Vassar is second, Zanardi is third, Greg Moore in fourth place, Guterman fifth, Paul Tracy sixth, then Parker Johnston, Alonso Jr. is lying in eighth place at the moment, Gilles de Fran in ninth. Just wondered if we get a view from the onboard camera. We just got one spot then of uh, the rain. Let's take another look. You can see on Vassar's car a few little droplets. Not too many as he goes round at this fairly slow speed. So perhaps over there it's not too bad. But I have to tell you, down here there's definitely a bit of rain and it's beginning to be a bit of a worry. It's looking quite grey, isn't it, at the moment? I think so greyer as it's been all day, I would say. Certainly the clouds are coming a little bit lower than they were earlier this afternoon. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll have to think, keep our fingers crossed. Certainly, uh, the, uh, the track cleanup has gone pretty well. They're fit, almost ready for that, I'd say. If we can get rid of these few spots of rain, I think we'll be back racing fairly soon. But uh, I'll just, tell you, just I'll tell see you what the weather gods, uh, whether, whether they agree with us or not. One guy who'll be really happy about this rain is uh, Michael Andretti right now, Jeremy. Absolutely right. He's uh, sitting pretty there out in the front of the field um, after a... Not, not the most competitive of days for him, but what, what the heck, he's, he, there he is, he's competitive, he's in the lead, that's fine by him at this stage, and uh, he won't be too sorry at all because it's, it's a heavy downpour. <laughs> but just while, while we're talking here under, under caution, Dario Franchini came into the pits uh, for half a dozen laps or so ago under the caution. Uh, good news for him actually because on the, under the previous yellow where we had the, the rain, Dario was, was able to make up his lap, regain the lead lap when the other guys made their pit stops. He was able to, able to come around to the tail end of the lead pack, but he wasn't allowed under the regulations to make a pit stop once he'd closed up behind the pack because he'd been able to, to, to move past the pace car. I don't know if I've explained this very well, but he was waved past the pace car in order that the pace car then picks up the race leader. So Dario Franchini goes then around to the tail of the field. He is not then allowed to make a pit stop until it goes green. 
so he was uh, there stuck at the back of the pack which is fine and then this latest yellow he can come in and make the service that he really needed so good good break here for Dario Franchitti even though at the moment he's back in uh, what, uh, 14th, 15th place, 14th place, because Patrick Carponche also has been under this in during this yellow. Well, it's uh, still a bit questionable on the weather conditions out here at the moment. Still just a little bit of rain around, but not really hard enough for any decisions to be made as yet as to what Cart will do as we wait for progress to be made. Mike Landretti still leading them round. The overhead view of the track, the grandstands there on the uh, right-hand side of the, the track, the sort of egg-shaped facility here, the long corner of turns three and four, that's the one that nearest us here. And then, uh, yes, you can see the, the road course there on the inside, that sort of wiggle where, where a lot of the, the uh, trailers are parked up this weekend. But it's, a, I think, Jeremy, a 1.6-mile road course they've built here. Yeah, and it uses sort of part of the oval, part of the infield. Uh, quite an interesting little course, it looks like. And I'm uh, not quite sure what the plan I think the plan at the moment really is only to run uh, amateur races, run ACCA regional and national events probably uh, this year. Uh, whether, whether there'll be a, a sports, uh, a uh, professional race there in the future, I'm sure Chris Poot would like to, to bring that to the Gateway International Raceway and really make the full use of this facility. Yes, it uh, has a lot of promising, a big promising future ahead of it and a lot of support from the local people here as well, just uh, down the road from St. Louis. And that means that a good crowd can get here very, very easily as well, which is exactly what they want. That's why Chris Book developed this particular site. And in the future, he'll look to increase the capacity, as he told us yesterday, building up the capacity, perhaps even to as many as 100,000 seats in the future. The 16th largest market, they're saying, in the United States. So uh, pretty significant uh, fan base here. And certainly there's a lot of interest in motor racing in this part of the world, in the Midwest. And major cities, Indianapolis, Chicago, not too far away. Um, and, uh, you know, there is a lot of racing heritage in this part of the world. So, as we can see, by a lot, large crowd here this afternoon. Great fun, great atmosphere here at uh, Chris Boot's new track. It is, yes, and uh, I think a lot of people enjoying the racing this afternoon as well. It's been a race of changing fortunes. We've had several drivers who seem to have been consistently up there, and really those are the two Jip Ganassi cars and Greg Moore. So Vassas and Ardy Moore, who are now running second, third, and fourth. They've been the consistent front runners. Paul Tracy has been fast as well, as we would have expected, but has lost out a little bit in the pit lane battles. And Alonso Jr. has also been fast, but he also has been in and out the pits a bit more than he would have liked, particularly right at the start of the race, which dropped him back to the end of the queue. Car still following the pace car around, and it's very much now down to conditions and down to moisture, rather than down to clear up operations from the accident, because those have all been completed now. And what we've got out there is quite a few of the car safety trucks just going around on the line, just uh, having a look at the amount of moisture around. And there's the sort of uh, contained excitement in the Newman Haas team, because if this race is called now, it is declared as a result, and their man would be the winner, which would be really quite remarkable, considering most of the afternoon he's been running in around 12th or 13th position. He's been competitive most of this year, but today it just hasn't been there as much as we would have expected. And yet, if the result is declared now, ironically, he would come out as the race winner. Yeah, he was passed by several cars, really, during the day. And, uh, you know, earlier on in the race, both uh, Gilles de Ferran and uh, Dario Franchitti were both able to get past Michael Andretti. So was Patrick Carpentier. Um, and uh, certainly not running nearly as strongly as he had expected to run with, with the Newman House Swift. But uh, <laughs> he's right where he wants to be at the moment. We're looking there at Chip Ganassi, and uh, he's got the, the shutters down on the, on his stall there in the pit pit lane. Yeah, there, you can see those droplets of water. That's much what our uh, commentary box window looks like at the moment as well. Just a few drops, but it's enough to uh, make them have to settle around behind a safety car and not restart the race until it gets fully dry once again. They might have wet tyres and be able to use them on the road courses and on the street tracks. But wet weather racing on the ovals is something they just don't do. It would uh, just be far too dangerous to even consider that on a short oval, particularly like this. The speeds, don't forget, they're getting up to 200 miles an hour around here in the dry conditions. And uh, it, it just isn't on to run these cars in the wet. So they've just got to follow that pace car around, be patient. <laughs> and down in the pit lane there, the guys in the pits have also got to be patient. It's a frustrating time for everybody, but it just has to be gone through. Yeah, it is. It, you're absolutely right. That's exactly the right word, frustration. I mean, the particular, and the fans as well, yeah, everybody is in the same boat here. It's only a few sprinkles, a very, very light, 
But, you know, the Carnifish...